My mom is gonna kill me. Oh, no. <laughs> she ever sees this, she's gonna be like, what? And you forgot? For me, I feel like the message of God's love has been laid really, really prominently on, on my heart. One of the things that I've, I've realized is as much as it's said, it's still not said enough. I find that a lot of the conversations that I have with people after shows, a lot of the things that, you know, emails we get, you know, whatever it is, some kind of communication from the listener is just that, that they need to be reminded of this. And uh, it's one of the lyrics that really gets me every night is just like, you know, everything changes when you find out that somebody loves you. And it really truly is something that it can reshape your life because when you realize that God loves you despite your circumstances, despite your sin, despite whatever you know, you're doing or caught in or whatever it is, he still loves you. He just desires a relationship with you and he wants to be in it with you because he wants to take all this from us. We just have to, we just have to actually start that journey. We have to start the conversation. Yeah, I love the way that you frame that of starting that conversation with the Lord. Yeah. How, I guess over this tour and the time since the song has come out, how, how has your conversation with the Lord changed as you've been hearing from the reactions of the song yeah. from your audience? Yeah, you know, I think it's just gratitude more than anything. Every day that we get to do this, it's a privilege, you know, like, and I mean, we talked about this even right before we we did the inter started doing this interview, but it's like, even in the midst of me feeling like I'm, I'm just trying to regain strength from my voice after being sick and all this stuff, it still is a privilege to be here and get to do this. It's it's a gift that we have every day to just elevate the name of Jesus, build the kingdom of God. And um, I think uh, every morning that I wake up, even though I'm tired <laughs> and, you know, it's like I don't sleep very well on the bus. I never really have. Um, and so even though that exhaustion kind of kicks in, waking up and just thanking God for another day waking up and thanking him for this opportunity is is really kind of our conversation lately is just thank you for being who you are and keeping me and keeping my voice around and you know trying you know healing me from sickness whatever it is and keeping our team tight so yeah i think it's just a a, a big thank you and a big heartful gratitude that's awesome yeah and i love that in your songs, it just gives this almost unstoppable feeling of hope. Thank you, dude. A lot of the messages that you've shared of Jesus is coming back He's yeah. right next to you. Yep. And right now in our world, a mm. lot of people feel really lost. Yeah. So if you could tell, you know, this generation, or maybe someone specifically who's feeling just a little bit lost and doesn't know what to do in the next step. Mm. Um, what type of direction would you give? You know, anytime I feel like we get to a place where we don't know what to do, there, there, there are a lot of options, but I find that the, the best option is to pray for clarity and guidance. I'm a firm believer that prayer works. <laughs> like, I know that there's some Christians that, you know, struggle with that. They struggle with the faith in that, but I've literally seen things happen that you cannot explain. You know what I mean? And every time I've asked God for clarity and every time I, I've asked him like, Lord, show me what to do next, what to do. It, it might not happen immediately, but at some point he reveals what the next step is. Um, whether it's through somebody, whether it's, whether it's through a conversation that I have with somebody, but I always feel like he kind of just falls over me in that moment of like, this is what I was having you wait for, or this is what I'm trying to get across to you. And the more we pray, the more in tune we are to hearing his voice and be able to discern what's our, our discernment, what's our soul speaking 
and what he's speaking to us. Because it is a very still, small voice, but it's very loud when you get used to it. Is there a verse right now that you're kind of holding on to that just gives you that sense of that loudness of God breaking through? <sighs> Off the top of my head, I don't really have a verse. I, you know, everybody always asks me, what's your favorite Bible verse? And I'm like, man, I don't have one. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know that sounds so bizarre because every Christian seems to have like a life verse. So they've got something... I just never have one because I always feel like I read something or somebody will post a verse and I'm like, whoa, that hit me different this time. But then within a week, I'm on to something else that hits me different. But for me, I would say there's a book in the Bible that I love running to whenever I need encouragement or need to just fill something in me. And I always run back to Ephesians. I I just think it's an amazing, there's so many different prayers from Paul and there's different, there's just a lot of life lessons. There's just a lot of learning in that book about the love of God. There's how to love others, how to treat others, how to treat your wife, like all these different things. There's just a lot of life lessons in there. And I I find that that book in the Bible is something I run to a lot. You're a talented artist and musician, but now you're also an author of a children's book. Yeah. And so that to me seems like a whole new kind of mode, but I wondered, you know, is there anything you learned through that experience? And could you kind of speak a little bit into what that's been like with that book? Yeah, you know, the the book has been a little bit of like a labor of love. I physically didn't sit down and write it, but I did write the my heart for it. But the book is something that I feel really, really called to mainly because I have kids in this next generation that are coming up. And this book is a reminder where I literally felt like the Lord rushed over me while we were praying about this process. I felt like God said, this is going to be a children's book because I want this next generation to read every single night where their true identity is found. For me, that's kind of been the thing that's been so heavy on my heart for you know, my kids, you know, I want them to know that their worth and their value resides in nothing that this world will ever tell them, but it's all wound up in the love that Jesus has shown them. And yeah, I think that that book is kind of the, the perfect segue for just posturing that for kids and being able to read it. And it was kind of the only way that I could think of getting to them without just playing them beloved, you know what I mean? So, yeah. That's awesome. How has your uh, family even reacted to the book as well with your kids? and My kids love it. My little girl loves it so much (laughs) because she's, you know, she's like the main reason why this, the song came to be. But uh, my wife, like my kids love it. They love to read it all the time. Yeah, Yeah, it's been a blessing for us. It's been a blessing that we've been able to give it to Mm -hmm. friends and family and yeah, and it, it, it's cool because people in our family and our friends, they obviously know us. And yeah. so the book is very true to who we are, too. So it's just very, it's cool. Yeah. It's awesome. It sounds like you have so much on your plate with being on tour, being a parent, a husband. Yeah. And so how are you doing with rest? Are you just finding that time in the midst of all the... Yeah. Uh, right now, not good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm beat, man. But I, we do have a season. So so after this tour, I'll lay it out for you. So you just are like, whoa. I have a, a day home, but I'm doing a event the day I get home. And then the next day I have a day off. And then the next day I start a four-day kind of craziness. I have this massive radio junket thing in L.A., And then I have a photo shoot and then I have a music video shoot. And then the last day we have a content shoot and then my family flies in and then we get a little bit of downtime for about a week. And then I have a show in my hometown at a gala event. I'm speaking at my church the next day and then uh, we'll have a couple days off. And then I come home, get ready for momentum, fly to momentum and then... uh, And then that's going to start the first real time of rest. (laughs) So I have about three weeks, I think, off after that. So there's a little there's pockets in there that are kind of restful. But yeah, it's 
it's it's a saddle up moment. It's like, all right, get ready. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Again, in this season of busyness, you know, what else is exciting you about the upcoming season that you have? You yeah, I'm man. I'm really excited. I just dropped a brand new single called "The King Is Alive," and I'm really excited about it. I don't know if I've ever been this excited about a radio single actually yet. I think maybe the only other one might have been Jesus is Coming Back and The River probably. But The River was, the excitement was because it's the first thing I ever put out. And Jesus is Coming Back was just something I felt really called to say. And The King is Alive is something that I feel really called to say. So, um, you know, this song, I wrote this song because my kids had come home one day. They both go to Christian school and they came home and and one day they were like daddy we want to hang out with jesus you know and i was like i said well you know guys jesus is as alive today as he was when he walked this earth he's with us right now like um you know and i was kind of just explaining this whole thing to them and they were just like whoa you know and just seeing their like wonder and like wow like moment was like it got me pumped because i was like dude that is so awesome like what a great like that's insane you know what i mean like just that reminder for myself that i'm like i'm the one saying it and so i was like we should write a song like this you know what i mean so um you know i i just wanted to write this song that would be a reminder that, like that the resurrection isn't something that we need to celebrate just on easter like the resurrection is actually something that transforms our faith and our daily lives every day. We have commonly placed it during Easter because of when it happened, but it's like this, this, this one event can transform our faith, our hope, our joy every day. If, if we're just reminded of it, you know, that the King is alive. And so, uh, yeah, I'm really excited about that song. I'm excited to see what people think and yeah, pumped. God has been working on this tour and, you know, got to speak to, um, you know, the audience that you've built up. Are there any messages that have been coming up frequently that just stand out to you as just a confirmation of the things that the Lord is doing? You know, we do like a VIP thing after the shows. Almost every night we've done this VIP thing. I've had somebody that's just been so honest, I guess. And they've been saying, like people will say stuff like, I just feel so comfortable sharing this with you because I feel like your music is so genuine or we, I feel like I can hear your heart in your music. I feel like I can hear like your, you know, joy or, you know. And for me, man, like that's the biggest compliment I think at least for me as the artist I am, I could be given because if you can't hear what I'm trying to say and how my heart is postured while I'm saying it, then I don't want to do it anymore. You know, like if it's just about the song, then dude, I want to go somewhere. I want to do something else. Like I could find a nine to five job that would probably pay me a lot more money than I make out here. And I could be home with my family every day. You know what I mean? But it's not about money. It's about advancing the kingdom of God. And it's about doing what God has called us to do and sticking to the assignment that he's given me. And so when somebody can kind of confirm that authenticity that I'm trying to give and that I feel like God has called me to, I think that's just been really encouraging. That's awesome to hear. And it's great that, um, just to see the openness and transparency of what God is laying on your heart and then just you expressing that out of a natural desire to please and give glory right back to Dude, thank you, man. It's just so encouraging to see. Thank you, dude. Uh, For those who are even just trying to figure out what God is placing on their heart right now, um, you know, what, and they maybe don't have the courage or the know-how to um, get that out in a certain way. Yeah. What, um, what encouragement or direction would you give to that of how they can express what God is doing? I feel like this is another per person basis thing, but I would say that you just need to be following where God has put you. 
Like if you feel like God is calling you to something or calling you into something, I mean, there's, there's literally, a, it's, it's, a, um, oh my gosh, my mom would smack me right now <laughs> if I forgot this. There's literally a biblical context of this. It's pray, uh, investigate, and oh my gosh, my brain. I'm sorry. I'm tired. What's the other one? Becky, you should know this too. Uh, my mom is going to kill me. Oh, no. If she ever sees this, she's going to be like, what? And you forgot? Is it seek wisdom? Yes. Seek wisdom. There we go. There you go. I think it's that. Pray, investigate, seek wisdom. I think that's what it is. Gosh, could be wrong. But outside of that, I, I think you just need to follow the path that God has you on. I think right now we're living in a world that is so consumed by other people's just what they have or what, you know, the way that they look or, you know, it's like our society, our whole culture has shifted to social media now to where it's like, we're trying to be people we're not. And we're, we're upholding things that we can't uphold because it's not us. It's somebody else. And I think, you know, for anybody that's trying to discern that, like you just have to stay focused on the path that God has put you on. Cause man, comparing yourself or trying to like fudge your way into, into some other particular space that isn't yours. You know, my dad used to call it, it's he called, you can either take the freeway or the interstate probably is what you guys say here, but you can either take the freeway or you can take the truck route. We'll all get to the same destination. It's just going to take you longer if you take the truck route. So stay on the path that God has you on and he's going to lead you right where you need to be. I love the way that you put that because um, it goes right back to what you were saying prior about, you know, that still small voice yeah. coming through so loudly with yep. God. But this world is just so many noises coming at Dude, you. Dude. Just trying to find. It's so overwhelming. My wife and I both get so overwhelmed with how much is caught. It's, and it's almost like, it's shifted things to where like, you feel like you have to be chained to this thing. You know, even for me, oftentimes I feel like I have, oh, I have to, cause it's a part of my job now. You know what I mean? Like, and it's so funny. Like I've had friends that have posted like normalize just normal life again. The last thing I want to do when I get home from not seeing my family for four days is be like, oh, well, people are going to get mad if I don't post an Instagram or, if I don't give an encouraging word for the day or whatever, it's like, man, like I'm trying to shepherd my flock, mm -hmm. you know? I'm called to be a, a husband and a father way before I'm called to post a Bible verse on my Instagram. Like, this is gonna sound kind of harsh, but it isn't my job to, to shepherd you, of course. right? It's not my job. Like, um, that, I mean, it's just not, and, and, as, as you know, I know you're married, you have kids. Once that kind of happens, you take on this whole new responsibility to be that, that, that presence in your home. You know, I think that's one thing that over the last couple of years, especially just downtime during COVID, all this stuff, it was kind of this factory reset for me of like, where am I prioritizing my time? Pre COVID, I, I mean, honestly, I think I was prioritizing my job a lot more than I was prioritizing my family, mainly because as guys, I'm sure every dude can relate to this, but you being the breadwinner, you being the primary form of income for your household, that's a weight on you. You know, you feel this pressure like, well, I'm, I'm making this decision for you. But then your family's like, but is it for us? You know, cause it sure doesn't feel like that when you're gone all the time. And I've found that man, like, you know, God honors when you make the decisions in the ladder that he's created. So when you're putting him first and you're putting your wife second, you're putting your kids third, and then you can let everything trickle down from there. When you honor that, that priority list that he has put together for you, um, you know, when you have something that, you know, you're like, oh, I should have taken this. It's like, the Lord's like, no, you shouldn't have. You made the right decision. Let me bless you here.